So let me start by uh, welcoming uh, Guillaume and uh, Jerome, our Hi. two hosts uh, for today. I'm Patrick. Uh, I will be off screen most of the time, but you'll hear me a, a bit in the beginning of this uh, webinar, um, just for the housekeeping uh, and uh, to present you with uh, the agenda. So um, we'll come back to the camera later on, but let's focus on uh, what we have on screen for now. A uh, brief word about Imagine Optic, uh, where um, uh, uh, deep company specializing in uh, wavefront sensors, uh, optical neutrality, uh, deformable mirrors, and uh, all sorts of complicated systems, including adaptive optics. And uh, today we're joined with uh, our uh, partners from Axiom Optics, uh, uh, who uh, are a distributor in the North America. So Jerome will be participating with us uh, during the Q and A session at, at the end. And thank you for being there. Oh, sorry, this slide got mixed up somehow. It was the, the idea was to mention that there are a couple of resources you can take advantage from uh, during this webinar. There are a couple of PDFs you can download with a brochure of uh, all our HAZO wavefront sensors and. Uh, the latest one, uh, the data sheet for the latest one, the ASO is well left to 160. And of course, the optical engineer company and the small leaflet. You'll find also three videos. One uh, with uh, Guillaume, uh, our CTO, presenting you uh, the optical engineer company uh, concept and uh, a few uh, demos. We're having problems with the audio. Sorry about that. Get a bit of a message uh, on my screen. So the last two videos are short tutorials uh, about WebView, so we found it appropriate. You'll find them in the in the, the little tab of the uh, go to webinar uh, panel. Um, <clears throat> I want to mention also that I want to ask you three quick questions at the end of the webinar. Please take a minute just to answer them. And uh, we can now uh, move to uh, the agenda. So we'll start with a, a kind of detailed presentation uh, by Guillaume of uh, the new uh, ISO standard-based uh, laser M squared feature. Um, and then Jerome will detail us uh, and, and show us how to do screen mode and a few uh, new features from uh, WaveView. We'll mention the 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 additional ASO wavefront sensors that are supported by this uh, version. And uh, we'll close it with uh, a, a quick uh, uh, demo of uh, how to support uh, and version updates work uh, using our uh, online interface. We'll try to keep it short in 20, 25 minutes and, and save uh, some time for the, the questions at the end. So, First things first, uh, well, uh, let uh, Guillaume uh, present the, the main uh, new feature in WebView, which is the ISO based uh, uh, yeah. laser M squared function, if I'm correct. You, you are correct. Thank you for this introduction, Patrick. Yes, let, let me present you how we can do M squared measurement using a wavefront sensor like the, the, the HAZO. Um, First, uh, the main work we did this last month is was to uh, look into the ISO standards because the M square parameter measurement is very detailed uh, written in this ISO standard. So we base our work on the three standards I mentioned here in this slide. Uh, this slide will be available uh, for download. So if you're interested in looking at this reference, do not hesitate. Um, and you'll see that on our software, you'll have to, uh, to, to calculate the M square. Uh, brief word about uh, beam analyzer or has a wavefront sensor. Usually, when you talk about M square, you think about putting a camera in the beam and 
slide the camera along the optical axis in order to acquire ten, uh, around 10 image, uh, images of the beam along the optical axis and then collect the data and calculate the beam size of each map acquired. And then the M square is calculating by fitting this envelope. Um, and what we do while with a wavefront sensor is nearly the same, except that, uh, in fact, the wavefront and the intensity profile are measured, are measured exactly at, on, um, at the same time. So only one measurement allows us to measure intensity and phase. And then what we can do is use just the Fresnel propagator, as, this, I, uh, as uh, mentioned uh, at the bottom of this slide. And these Fresnel propagators allows us to calculate the intensity maps all along the optical axis. So, and when we have these intensity maps, the process to calculate them square is exactly the same that the one you can use using a Starlight camera. But the main difference is that now the M squared parameter is obtained from a single laser chart. chart. So you, you can measure the M squared on a single laser chart because you need only one measurement to calculate everything. So how can we calculate and measure intensity and phase at the same time? In imaging optics, we have a very wide uh, range of wavefront sensors. All are based on Shack Hartman. And a Shack Hartman wavefront sensor consists in uh, the association of a microlenses array and a detector. What happens is that if a plane wavefront comes onto this microlenses array, it creates a regular array of spots that are detected by the sensor. And if, of course, the wavefront has some aberration, the spots at the focal plane of the micro lenses will be shifted, and the image acquired by the camera will have a lot of spots, but on a regular grid. By calculating the position of the spots, it allows us to calculate the wavefront derivatives and then the wavefront by 2D integration. So, to be very concrete, here is an example of what we can acquire with the Shackatman wavefront sensor. So it's basically an array of spots, and we can calculate very precisely the position of all the spots to calculate the wavefront. And in parallel, if we integrate the data to pixel on each spot by calculating the spot volumes, it allows us to access it to the intensity of the beam. So these kind of wavefront sensors are controlled by WebView, and uh, WebView is the metrology software that can drive all uh, our wavefront sensors, and we'll see how it works in that just now. Exactly. So we're going to switch to uh, camera briefly so yeah. that uh, Guillaume can show so, us uh, uh, the, the setup we're going to be using. I will, I will use the camera just to, to show you the setup. We are here, we have here. So as you see, it's a very, very simple one. So we have here the wavefront sensor. It's um, a hassle for broadband. So again, it's a Shackatman wavefront sensor, 68 by 50 micro lenses. It is driven only by a USB cable and the area size is seven by five millimeters square. So using this sensor, you can measure laser from 350 nanometers to 1.1 micron, and the sensor is calibrated all along this spectral bandwidth. Calibration means that you can rely on the absolute measurement uh, given by the wavefront sensor at the level of lambda over 100 root mean square, which is enough for many kinds of applications. Uh, here on this bench, we have also a small source. So it's not a laser, but a laser diode which is inside this box here. Uh, it's a 520 nanometer uh, laser diode. It is fibered on a single bone fiber. And I just set a lens here that collimate the beam and create a Gaussian beam like a laser. So now we'll see uh, the information that is acquired by the camera and how we can calculate phase intensity 
and uh, the M squared final. So I'm going to give uh, Jerome uh, the hand uh, on the presentation so we can go to the live demo. Okay, thank you, Patrick and Guillaume. Um, <clears throat> so you can see the software, WaveView software, the meteorology software used by uh, ASO uh, sensor. Uh, to begin the presentation, I want to focus on four, in, uh, four main parts of this uh, software. The main part is to start the acquisition, manage the acquisition from the ESO is a tool, this toolbar. Uh, there is a, um, a part of the software to set up the acquisition or all the calculation we will we'll do with the sensor. And we have the metrology toolbar which can uh, allow us to have an access to all diagnoses from the ESO sensor and the uh, display area when you display all the, the genesis. To begin, we can check the um, image from the ESO sensor. And as uh, say Guillaume, you can see the old spot we have in the, in, actually in, in the sensor. Um, by uh, calculation, we can get the exactly exact position of each bin uh, from the uh, microlens array, uh, array. So we can calculate the, the slope, and from the slope, we can calculate uh, the wavefront area. Yeah. And after you can calculate also the intensity of the, the uh, beam analyzer, and we can run, and you can see what happened. Uh, the live uh, wavefront measurement of the current uh, beam on the setup. Uh, Yes, uh, so uh, as you see, there are many, many uh, parameters to to get information from the HESO sensor, but you can use um, a shortcut to uh, identify for some favorites to uh, have a quick access to the whole function, the uh, current functionality you want to, to use uh, usually. Uh, so now we have the reference and intensity. You can uh, propagate using uh, FF, FFT uh, tools from uh, along the optical axis to get the intensity map from different uh, Z position. And to get the um, uh, well, n square parameters. So here, yeah, the new display of the n square parameter. Uh, you can choose um, different sort of uh, beam type. Uh, the ISO standard use three type of beam. The circular beam, uh, astigmatic astigmatism beam, or general astigmatism beam. Uh, here we choose the astigmatism beam and calculate when I activate the, the computation of the. Uh, and so you can see in the display the two information. Uh, the M square for X axis or Y axis, you can calculate different uh, M square features, uh, different uh, position of the west, different uh, west si uh, size uh, in the, the two axes. And we here 
we can manage uh, the position of the that's uh, the z z position through the optical uh, axis. Um, okay, if you, I think I said that uh, one single measurement was enough to to do to do a wave uh, m square measurement. Is it possible to plot during time this m square information? <coughs> uh, for instance, the stability of a laser. Yes. Uh, so I shows the type of uh, the method to to get the web n square features and click on as all in the win windows uh, diagnostic we have a scalar and with scalar uh, we can add to the data analysis uh, windows and play run to uh, show the <clears throat> n square evolution uh, during the time and here we have uh, 1.6 T2 uh, average of the M square and one, uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.01 MMS uh, standard deviation of these parameters. Yeah. Okay, very, very interesting. Uh, if I want to, 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 to plot uh, the, 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 my laser stability during time that means I need for instance to measure the same square for a night and do a measurement each minute is, it, is that it possible with, yeah, the, the, uh, with this software one of the new software feature is to create a, a script measurement here in the features tree we have uh, to we have four modes to ac acquire um, uh, waveforms we have the live we have a snap, we have a full, and we have a script uh, mode. And Square. Okay, so uh, we, you have to show us how to save all this data. Can you, uh, how I can extract from this uh, software yes. the information? In all windows, negative uh, windows, we have a contextual menu to save data. Yeah. Data and then. You can see in the text file all data we have in the in the windows. Okay, so I mean I, I have here the the, the intensity uh, yeah. along the Z axis, exactly. the, the, the maps. Uh, okay, all all the, uh, the two maps you can see, and all the the scalar uh, output and the setup of the calculation. We can also save the in the same uh, type of menu all the data analysis you 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 have to select. Okay, so it, uh, can you confirm that it allows us to uh, line laser based on an M square parameter because you have now this information line, so you can imagine a user to adjust a mirror or adjust a lens in order to get the M square he wants. Right. Okay, can you confirm that um, this software can be connected to all the sensors that we have here in Imagine Optic? Yes, well, this software is compliant to all the ISO for service uh, sensors and uh, sweer, sweer sensor and the lift sensors. Okay, so that's maybe the opportunity to switch to the presentation. Yeah, yeah because actually, we can. Thanks so much. So we just saw that uh, WaveView does indeed control the, the ASO and bring all the results and you can export them and record them using different modes. So thank you, Jerome, that was very clear. Um, apart from that, yes, it was my duty to mention that uh, 
This version of WaveView supports additional waveform sensors. So um, we just mentioned two of them uh, here. So the, the, the brand new ASO Square Lift 160, which is both a square uh, waveform sensor and a lift, which, mean, which means it has uh, a much more enhanced resolution compared to standard Shaq uh, uh, hardware, so 16 times the export resolution. You can check uh, it out on our website, imagine-optic.com. And uh, I want to mention also the, the ASO Edge series, which is uh, a group of waveform sensors that uh, your team, uh, Guillaume, developed for uh, specific clients and specific needs, and that uh, we can pretty rapidly and easily adapt to, to uh, needs that would be close or comparable to the ones we originally developed those uh, 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 ASOs for. So you can find also some information on the web page, but if you need more detailed information, please feel free to contact us. Um, I'm now going to mention very quickly, uh, because we, we took some time already, that uh, if, if you want support in general on our hardware or software, you can use the, the support uh, tab on our website. This will bring you to uh, a lot of resources. So FAQs, uh, some uh, tutorials, uh, uh, some video tutorials, and generally a lot of answers to uh, the most common uh, uh, hurdles or uh, troubles that you can run into using our website. I, I shall insist on this because uh, it's actually a very good uh, uh, way also to make sure you have the latest release versions or to understand where your version uh, is placed in the, the history of our releases. Uh, and it, anyhow, if you don't find the, the answer there, you, you can always uh, uh, open a ticket and directly uh, support, uh, talk to our support people. But it's also really interesting for us to uh, understand who's using which uh, waveform sensor. So it can allow us to better uh, propagate information about new releases or updates or uh, uh, other useful technical information. So if you're if you're a client or if you consider being a client in the next future, uh, uh, please uh, take the time to just register on our uh, uh, Zendesk interface. That is, that is where uh, this uh, website leads. So uh, thanks so much, uh, everyone, uh, for uh, uh, listening to us. And thanks, uh, Jerome and Guillaume, for uh, this presentation. Uh, and I think it's now uh, time for the Q&A. So uh, you can, maybe I forgot to, to tell that at the beginning, but you can actually uh, put questions directly in the question tab. Uh, and uh, you can also use the chat uh, to uh, uh, raise questions. And maybe Jerome has some um, questions already. <clears throat> yes, thank you uh, everybody for the for that uh, very interesting presentation. Um, I have a quick question. Is there any requirement regarding the positioning of the distance between the source and the uh, wavefront sensor. In other words, do, do we need to be oh. in the raised? So, sorry, Jerome, uh, just a, a small problem uh, with the audio. Um, I apologize for that. Just give me one second to deal with that. Thanks. You can go ahead, Jerome. Okay. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, all three, for, for this uh, very interesting presentation. Uh, it's exciting. Uh, I have a quick question regarding the, um, is there a need to have the, the wavefront sensor to a specific distance compared to the source? Or in other words, do we need to be in the relay zone to perform that M square measurement? Uh, yeah, that's, that's an interesting question because usually uh, users of um, beam analyzer uh, 
try to, to, to do the measurement of each plane close to the waist and around the relay zone of this laser, it is not necessary uh, when you measure uh, the beam using wavefront sensor. Uh, you can be at the waist or far from the waist. Uh, the measurement of phase intensity will give you exactly the same information wherever is the sensor along the optical axis. So it's not a constraint. You, you can set the wavefront sensor everywhere in the beam. So I have another question. Um, what is the um, golden ratio between the, the size of the beam and the, uh, the, the size of the uh, detector for, to perform a, a good measurement? In other words, is there any relation between the, the spatial resolution uh, and the, the accuracy of the uh, M-square processing? Okay, um, the, the software automatically detects uh, if the beam that is under measure is uh, okay for M square measurement. And there are mainly two constraints. The first one is that the Gaussian beam uh, must be measured even at the edge of the Gaussian beam. We have to have at least 90% of contrast uh, to. to measured by the wavefront sensor. Of course, if we crop the beam, the propagation process won't be accurate enough to calculate the correct M square. But you have, you can rely on the software because there are warnings uh, that uh, say, okay, be careful, the beam is cropped. I can't calculate a reliable M square. And there is a second uh, thing that is necessary. If you have a very, very bad M square, which means that there are a lot of aberrations in the beam, uh, which is quite rare, um, you have to sample the beam enough. If you have only two points of the wavefront uh, that uh, contains uh, reliable information because uh, the, the phase is too quick to be measured by the sensor, uh, of course, the M square parameter won't be calculated with uh, enough uh, reliability. Again, the software alerts you, and that is why uh, this system is compatible with all of our sensors. We have a wavefront sensor with 60, 180 points of phase in one direction. So of course, if you think that your laser is very bad, it can be a good idea to sample the beam very uh, finely in order to obtain a very accurate M square. Nice. I have a, another question um, regarding the measurement of um, pulsed, uh, pulsed beam, uh, single shot. Ah, single shot. Yes, I, I, uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, as you uh, as you should have understand now is that only one single measurement uh, is needed to do the the measurement the M square measurement. So uh, if you have a pulse laser, the only thing to take care of is to synchronize the laser pulse with a wavefront sensor. And as our wavefront sensors have uh, input output. Uh, at the rare part of the sensor, you can trigger the acquisition uh, of the camera with the laser pulse in order to be sure that during the exposure duration of the camera, the laser shot quite, it, it, it comes. And then, of course, if the image is quiet at this time, the wavefront sensor measures the beam and the square can be calculated. Nice. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think the video will be available. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for reminding me, Neil. So the video will be available uh, in the next few days where we'll take down to add some titles. Um, and we'll let you know when it's ready. There's a newsletter uh, outgoing uh, next week that will also mention the replay of this webinar. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Goodbye. Bye-bye.